We do not have a financial, political, or military battle on our hands. It is a war on our consciousness, what we actively or passively support in our lives every day. When you see the true nature of this war, you will not only see the real reason why the American empire will collapse, you will also see that the solution to all these problems in the world are found in the opposite consciousness. We empower them, they do not control us. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. There are two ways of going through life. One is to go with the tide, the other is against the tide. There is the way of walking away, and a way of aggressive resistance. There is the way of a swaying palm tree, and the way of a solid oak. There is a way of voluntary cooperation, and a way of forced servitude. There is a way of moving on, and a way of forcing something that is not there. There is a way of knowing everything happens for a reason, and a way of vengeance. There is a way of grace, and a way of competition. In the past three weeks, he's the one boy who is finding the warm spot in the heart of competition. And did you make a touchdown? Yeah. It kicked off three weeks ago with Berkeley High School. In an unusual pass, the coach wanted the other team to score as long as Chip Mullen was holding the ball. What did the referee do? Okay, touchdown. Some would not find value of this man in our competitive world. Others would see that humanity needs to find the grace in his world. When not interfered from outside influences, everything in nature is done with perfection and in balance. Some will see this as God's benevolent hand touching everything we do. Others will see this as simply the way things are. You can either accept things as they are or push things to extreme, forcing change upon your world. We see this as empires spread to dominate the natural world. We see this as growing nations build the largest buildings that defy gravity and are designed to scrape the sky. We see this as societies push politics and economics to the extreme. Ozymandias. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, Two vast trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them, on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well made those passions read, which yet survive stamped on these lifeless things, the hand that mocked them and the heart that fed. On the pedestal those words appear, My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look upon my works, ye mighty in despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. We laugh at the towers of Babel people created and worshipped, and yet remain blind to the towers we construct and worship in our own lives. It seems that humanity is driven for some reason to do things that defy nature of balance and peace. We spend so much time, effort, and money on things that have no permanent value, and worse, things that do not bring us any joy or happiness along the way. The Egyptians used tremendous amount of blood to build pyramids on the backs of slaves. The Romans built the world's largest empire only to rot from the excesses it brought. Even today, the American empire, the largest and most powerful empire the world has ever seen, rots and will eventually collapse. And for what? All hail Americanandius, the empire of empires with full spectrum dominance. Oh, how the world shudders at how mighty it is, and the cries of despair for the fear of its wrath. What will future generations feel about us when the American empire collapses and fades from the natural world? We build machines, organizations, and societies that divide and conquer the natural world instead of seeing that all of life is connected and meant to work together. This is the real reason why things fail. They fail because they are not natural. They lack the why. They lack fundamental purpose. Without a deeper connection and cooperation like that of a thriving ecosystem, all organizations and efforts will ultimately fail. Think about the amazing forces that must work together to support life on Earth. We are a perfect distance of 93 million miles away from a sun that burns at 10,000 degrees. We move 67,000 miles an hour, and our atmosphere protects us from the outer space. As we live in a thin layer of oxygen that is created by a carefully balanced ecosystem, and that even our immune system prevents us from dying. Knowing that this interconnection and cooperation is vital to our existence, why do we insist on building a paradigm that seems to divide and conquer? You cannot solve a problem with the same consciousness that created it. You must see the world anew. Albert Einstein Some would say that it is human nature to build things to the extreme, only to fall to earth like Icarus. It is wonderful that we possess the imagination, the skill, and the drive to do great feats. We seem to focus on the how, and not the why we should do things.
Why is it that so much capital and innovation goes into things that destroy the human experience? We spend trillions on weapons to enrich some and dominate others. We spend billions on gadgets to numb us to the natural world and the connections with others. Why? Qui bono? Who does this benefit? There are only two kinds of people in this world. Those that want to be left alone and those that just won't leave you alone. There are those that live by grace and those that seek to dominate. Those that won't leave you alone are hurt people from this competitive world and they have become like their abusers to take an eye for an eye. They seek to pleasure themselves but also for others to please them too. They seek adoration as they cannot find it in themselves. They seek to be loved because they cannot love themselves. They force relationships based on money and manipulation because that is all they know. They seek to dominate others because they know that they cannot hold on to others any other way. They do not know of grace and love, so they seek to destroy that which they don't understand. Destruction is far easier for them than looking at themselves and changing or addressing a past hurt. When you look at the social predators that sit at the top of the centralized organizations that create, perpetuate, and profit off this unnatural paradigm, it is no wonder we are in a world surrounded by debt and death. Does the hubris and arrogance of these social predators represent the majority of humanity that simply wants to live in peace? No. Why hasn't humanity ever focused all of its wonderful talents and abilities to create a paradigm that is in balance and resonates with something inside of us? Instead of spending trillions of dollars trying to dominate the world for more oil, what about spending that money and living in a renewable balance? Instead of spending more money than we have, what about living within our means? Instead of acting like competitive animals, what about embracing the grace that sets us apart from the animal world? Instead of thinking you can control your world, what about just enjoying the ride? Couldn't all this amazing technical skills and capital be better spent on things that would seek to create a more balanced way of life? What would humanity look like if we did not focus on pushing things to the extreme and focused all of our actions on things that are more natural like a sustainable way of life? What would humanity be like if we stopped trying to change everybody else and worked on ourselves? What would humanity be like if we divided power so that no social predator could convince good people to do bad things? What would humanity be like if we walked away from things that did not resonate with us? What would the world be like if we all went along with the tide of nature instead of constantly fighting it? Things pushed to the extreme ultimately fail. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. The law of thermodynamics, mathematical inevitability, reversion to the mean, falling back to earth, divine retribution, coincidence, karma, fate. When will we have the wisdom to see that we cannot change the outside world to make ourselves happy or free? When will we have the courage to change ourselves to make the world happy and free? Only then will the world become a lot less scary and more possibilities open as you come to the acceptance stage of a new paradigm. With the mathematically inevitable collapse of this unnatural paradigm, we have the unique opportunity to use our technical knowledge and advanced communication to build a paradigm that is sustainable and of meaning. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled, and that has made all the difference. What path are you on? The Silver Shield Exchange is a free weekly podcast, but the only way to hear it is through email. Sign up today at silvershieldexchange.com.